the people in here, they've been inside from the start. They haven't had to survive. And they just don't get it. They can't. The very thing that makes you different is what makes you special. Mm, now I'm all warm and fuzzy inside. We need the arrow. The arrow's dead. Couldn't be that person even if I wanted to be. And welcome once again to the Fandom Zone podcast. Uh, I'm Charles Skaggs, and joined apparently by the Mirror Universe, Karen Lindsay. Yes, I'm from the darkest timeline. With with her evil yeah, Spock beard. So yeah, <laughs> that's from, right. Or from the community, darkest timeline. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Think I didn't know that reference, did you? <laughs> no, I yeah. I figured you would. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So this is the darkest. This is the, this is the darkest timeline because I have a cold. That's, that's kind of depressing, but that's all right. I guess if and it's, you know, cold I guess it, I guess if the darkest timeline is that you have a cold, that's yeah, not that's not too that's bad. Not, right? That's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. Coulson lost his arm. Yeah. So it's kind of like Jeff who lost right. his arm in the darkest timeline. So <laughs> isn't that it? Something like that. So yeah, I. Uh, I got this out to uh, <laughs> to use with my friends when we were doing a podcast marathon on Blip. Yeah, and it it made them laugh, so uh, I decided to uh, keep it on and uh, <laughs> and have you enjoy it as well. So <laughs> I will remove it now, and you. I know. I, I, I was getting what? like Missy the Master vibes from this. Oh, do you like it? <laughs> Should I just keep it? If you want. I was actually stroking it earlier <laughs> as if I were it's... contemplating something seriously. For those who obviously can't see, Karen is sporting a lovely paper, uh, a paper beard. beard. Paper beard. Yeah. Yes. A dark, with a big, thick stash. Yes, it's very a, nice. And a full goatee action going on. It is luxurious it is. in its paperness. Yeah, we're talking like, you know, like war doctor type beard here. Oh, yes. It's huge. Or maybe a Herschel action going on. Oh, definitely. So. Except complete blackness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with sporting tape marks on both sides. <laughs> yeah, Karen's a little under the weather. And she was complaining <laughs> that, well, maybe I'm not going to be as funny tonight because she's on cold medicine. And right now I kind of beg to differ with that. <laughs> You're enjoying the beard? Yeah. Is that you're enjoying it? Okay. Jeez. I don't know. I, I think I look very girlish with my beard yeah. on. It's it's very uh, sophisticated. Oh, is it sophisticated? Yeah. Dapper. And... You're dapper. Cheek? Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I enjoyed your Captain Colds. Yes. I've, I'm rocking the... Uh, I've got the new uh, DC Direct Captain Cold from the Flash TV nice. show. Very nice. Got, just got that at, or the, legends. At, at my friendly neighborhood comic book store, The Laughing Ogre. So free Very plug nice. to shout out to the ogre and here in Columbus. And also I've got my Funko Captain Cold. So I've got two of the TV Captain Cold. So I'm very happy about that. Very nice. And uh, waiting patiently for the uh, Heat Wave and Reverse Flash figures, which probably arrive in 2016. But... Now that's weird. Yeah. Why would they have Captain Cold first? And well, he's kind of the arch enemy, and he also appeared on the show first. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. I mean, because Harrison wasn't revealed as the Reverse Flash until later. Yeah. But, okay. But it would be nice to get like you know Iris West or you know uh, Caitlin, Cisco, Joe. It would be nice to get the whole. Did they ever make the normal person figures? Yeah. Early? Well, they... early? Well, they made well. They made Felicity for Arrow. So, All right. So there's a Felicity Smoke figure now. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Got to pimp that Felicity. Yeah. So we have a new season two theme, which yes. might get tinkered with. Yeah. As we discussed before air. 
but new quotes. Yes, new quotes. New, new quote clips, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm not happy with the arrow quote, neither is Charles. It's okay. I don't hate it, but, you know, it's... I, I'm not in love I think, with it. I think we can do better. Yes, I know I can do better. I know. Um, but I was working, uh, again, on cold meds today, and that's going to be my standard <laughs> excuse for everything today. Um, I have it, been compiling clips from trailers and stuff, so... Um, and again, we don't have a lot of stuff for Arrow yet. Now, I know you've seen Arrow already tonight, yes. but I have not. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I only have the trailers to work from. So I won't spoil it. No spoilers. But after tonight, I will have a little more. That's okay. I still need to catch up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. from last night. Oh, okay. But, but, but speaking of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're going to be talking about this season premiere. That's right. See, oh, by I, the way, see how I segued back to the you know the the main discussion topics. That's right. That's this is episode twenty-seven. Twenty-seven of the Fandom Zone. Of the Fandom Zone, and, and we're, we're going to be talking about oh. Agents of Shield, first episode of season three, Laws of Nature. Mm-hmm. Back with the vengeance. And Fear the Walking Dead, episode five, Cobalt. Mm-hmm. And. Knock Knock, the second episode of Gotham Season 2. That's right. Who's there? Uh, Doctor Who? No. Mm. Shucks. I know. Now I'm depressed. Okay. I know. All right. That's good. I just have to wait for, you know, next stop everywhere. But Yeah. Oh, that's well. in a couple more days. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, uh, might as well go in chronological order. Okay. Just, just throw... Uh, doesn't matter. Whichever one you want. I'm not throwing you, hopefully. Uh, oh. Let's do Fear the Walking Dead. Sure. That's the oldest. Uh, Cobalt. And this was written by David Wiener. I know, right? Wiener. You said Wiener. And, you know, I've, I'm, I feel bad for you, dude. I have last name Skag, so I feel bad for you. Uh, directed by Kari Skogland. Yeah, same as last week. Same as last week, you're right. And David okay. Wiener worked on The Killing. Yes. Just so I throw that in while we were mentioning his name. Is that when it was good or not so good? The more recent one. Okay. I haven't watched the show, so. I I haven't either. I heard things, but that's about it. I don't know exactly which episodes he wrote. Right. So things keep escalating on Fear the Walking Dead. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the zombie apocalypse keeps progressing a little bit nicely. And the military keeps being jerks. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have uh, we start off with like um, Ophelia wanting to see her mom. Did you know that Cobalt was the working title for Fear of the Walking Dead? Yes, I did. I did know that. I thought I would bring that up right That's now. That's okay. I'm glad you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see what you did there. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we had three storylines here. Yes, we did. And. Um, all right, yeah, because we've got basically got like trying to figure out what's going on with um, Ophelia's mom, and then we have Daniel having some fun with a shaving kit, yeah. which yeah. I which I enjoyed. Yeah, and uh, then we've got um, uh, Liza, who is work working kind of behind the scenes, trying to help out. You know, she's trying to be, a, a, you know, a, through a, for her, like, medical training, and she's trying to help all these people, but uh, she's notice, noticing some shady things going on behind the scenes, mm-hmm. and so that's not good. Yep. And uh, we get, thanks to Daniel, we find out about a nice little ticking clock. Yeah, right? For the group. So things cobalt. are escalating. Yeah, cobalt. We find out what cobalt really is. Do we want to talk about that now, or do we want to wait? Well... I have them uh, condensed into three things. So okay. Go let ahead. me tell you what I named them. All right. And then you tell me what you want to talk about first. That's cool. How's that? That works. An outline. Okay. That's fine. Um, military command post. And that's where I put Victor Strand, mm-hmm. um, Liza and Dr. Exner, mm-hmm. uh, Griselda, um, and then uh, Victor and Nick at the end. Right. Okay. okay. And then I have Suburbia. Mm-hmm. Which is Ophelia making a fuss, uh, and the soldiers trying to quiet her, but then Adams goes and takes her back. Daniel kidnaps Adams with the razors and all yep. that. Um, 
So there's the whole torturing part of it. And then the um, Chris and Alicia being brats. Yes. And that's the two different ver- storylines converging into one. So Chris being bratty on his end, Alicia being bratty on her end, and then them both converging yeah. in the house. Yeah. yeah, because everything kind of, they walk back from their little escapade and, right. and kind of get back in and come home and be like, oh crap, it's all right. going down. Right. And, and there, that's kind of where we're left. Right. And that I call that suburbia. Okay. The safe zone area. The community. Right. And then DZ yep. is the other storyline. And I that's where Travis persuades Moyers to take him to the command center. And they agree. Uh, so they drive through yep. and they try to get him to kill the walker, but he can't do it. Mm-hmm. And then the soldier, this is, I'm just pretty much giving away this whole storyline. Yeah, pretty uh, much. The soldiers <laughs> fight a house full of infected while Travis stays back. Only Castro returns and tells Travis they're going back to the safe zone. And he says Moyers isn't coming back. Um, And he says Castro's, he says, I'm bugging out. I'm going to San Diego on my own. You're on your own. Later, dude. Um, Travis gets back home to find out what Daniel's been doing. And he's just in time to find out about the Cobalt plan. Right. So that's the whole DZ storyline essentially right pretty much with yeah. travis yeah and that's and, and all Moy- that and, Moy- and, Moy- and moyers being a dick well yeah but i mean moyers ends up dead in this so i figured you know well, <laughs> that evens out right i mean he's a dick and then he dies so is he dead i don't think <laughs> i thought he just kind of took off oh no he he is gone um i thought he just like fled and there's a an official uh, Walking Dead wiki, oh. and they count him as among the dead uh, last appearance. Hmm. Dead, interesting sort of thing. It, uh, yeah, didn't see it on screen. Well, no, because that's why Castor comes back and goes, "I'm out." Oh, okay. Because everyone else gets like munched on. Okay. Um, dead until further revealed. Yeah, supposed. Because, yeah, because he could turn up later and go, "Up, oh, guess what? You thought I was dead." Sure, I guess so. Yeah. Um, I'm a survivor. I've got guns. So really, the only two major plot points are the military command post, and that's two. That's the Strand Chris, Mm -hmm. no, the Strand Nick stuff and the Liza Dr. Exner stuff. Right. And then Suburbia, which is um, Adam's getting tortured. Yeah. And uh, there's a little tiny bit with um, Chris getting snotty with Madison. Mm Mm-hmm. Which, right? wow, <laughs> that's rude. I mean, the world's about yeah. to end, and you're like, I'm not apologizing to her. Well, he wants to get Mommy and Daddy back to the, together. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. Let's see how that works out. Foreshadowing. Yeah, foreshadowing. Okay. Um, you want to talk about the shaving kit? Because I really want to talk about the yes, shaving kit. Yes, let's do. Okay. Uh, Daniel, you... Shaving yeah. cream. Me nice and clean. Very nice. <laughs> Obscure 50 song. Very And nice. also kind of applicable in this situation, yes. if yeah. you know what it applies to. Well, Daniel's a barber. And uh-huh. we're talking about Ruben Blades' mm-hmm. character. Bladis, however you pronounce it. It's Blades. I thought it was like, it. there's an affect there. There is. Okay. But it's still Blades. Okay, Blades. And uh, so Daniel uses this shaving kit. Uh, to torture Andrew, who is, you know, like, who's all hung, who was all hung up on Ophelia. And apparently, we, through some scene we didn't get, Ophelia tricks him into getting captured and now tied up and now tortured by um, Daniel. Well, her f- he volunteers to calm her down. Right. He but talk- she's throwing rocks at the. Right. Right. Because everybody, everybody's like, you know, you better get your woman in line. Yeah, they kind of gloss over it, but that's yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. And she just assumes that her dad's going to, mm-hmm. you know, try and forcefully talk him yeah. into telling them something and then trade him. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. So he's like cutting off, Daniel's cutting off layers of skin. He's off of laying him. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, and, he's, and he's being really like menacing about it saying he's really playing it up he's saying uh you know you know as you cut down you know the nerves get more sensitive so he's just kind of you know psychological torture as well as the physical 
I love how he tells these stories too. Right. Right. He's so good at it. <laughs> Last week he's, he told the story about the bodies floating in the water, and right. now this week with the yeah. He should write a fairy tale book. He should. <laughs> Daniel Salazar's <laughs> Illustrated Tales. Daddy Daniel's fairy tales. <laughs> right. Once I came home, and there was a mother whose head had been severed, and le- and her crying daughter was there, cradlingly, crating, cradling her in her arms, or whatever, something. Daddy or- Daniel's fairy tales for baby. Yep. Baby Ophelia. Mm-hmm. And then one of the soldiers had a ring of ears around his neck. <laughs> Just such heartwarming. They were strung like daisies. Yeah. (laughs) This is so rude. And then there was Tobias with his battle cart. (laughs) No, don't get my hopes up with a battle cart. I know, right? Where is he? Uh, He's lying in wait. Yeah. Because it's Tobias. He's got his he's got his plan. He's all ready. He's gonna be it's gonna be, you know, season two is gonna be Daniel Salazar and Tobias. And they're going to be like, you know, Team Supreme. You know, like you thought like, um, you know, Rick and Daryl or Rick and Shane was a badass duo. It's it's going to be Daniel and Tobias. I got a feeling. Good. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Mm-hmm. I, might, I might be wrong about that. No, I really hope so. I want Tobias back. <laughs> he does need to come back. If only just to look at everybody going, give him, give him the uh, I told you so look. Yeah. That he gave yeah. Madison on the bus. I want to. I want to see that look. Like you couldn't even be bothered to keep the canned food. Right. (laughs) Go back for the canned food. He needs to be like the battle cart guy. Yeah. Honestly. Yep. To be like Ash. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. We need like you know he's got like wooden spikes mounted on the battle cart and he's got barbed wire or something you know or a you know like a baseball bat. He's like Death of these 2000. Yes. Well, no, no, no. I got it even better. The Road Warrior. Yes. With like, he's the guy that, um, the big humongous guy who comes, um, did you ever see the Road Warrior? Yeah. Okay. So you know who I'm talking about then. The guy with the like big kind of hockey mask, you know, he comes out and he says, just walk away. Just walk away and we will spare your lives. Just walk away. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> that would be the perfect <laughs> that would thing. Be awesome. He would come out and he would say, You just walked away from the canned <laughs> food. You just walked away. <laughs> How's that? That would be great. I would love that. <laughs> the battle cart warrior. <laughs> I like it. We need to make that happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um,. So, torture, 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 Andrew finally reveals that Cobalt is a command code to initiate evacuation from the L.A. command base, but only military personnel. Yep. Euthanize everyone else. Yep. Military bugs out. Yep. Also includes procedures for humane termination. Yeah. With laser beams. (laughs) Laser beams. (laughs) Quotes, laser yes, beam quotes. quotes. Yeah. Humane termination. Yeah. You guys, when we say you, laser beam, laser that beam. means air quotes. That's air quotes. You should laser quotes. You should know that by now. Yeah. Um, which of course is a ridiculously polite way of saying mass slaughter all around of the yeah. civili- any civilians left in town, and it's planned for why? Guess what? Nine a.m. tomorrow morning. That's right. Of course, it's okay. always immediate. Yeah. Always. But that's okay. I mean, sure. we have a season finale in the following week, so sure. why not? Yeah, let's ramp yeah. this up. So, got things got things to do. Yep. The Walking Dead returns for season six, so yeah, we need to make that happen. Yeah, yeah. got to turn it right over, <laughs> right? Got to get that shiz happening. Exactly. All right. Mm. So we did, do uh, you want to talk about Travis and Moyers now? Or we want to talk about Liza and Ex- Dr. Exner? Uh, or, Chris, whichever. or Chris and Alicia. Chris and Alicia, let's get that over with. Chris and Alicia, okay. They're going to be doing it. Pretty much. Yeah. They're going to be, you know, like, 
this is where we get into the like creepy like step sister brother thing maybe sort of well, they're not even that, related not, 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 they're not related but and they wouldn't have ever been related yeah because the families would have never been yeah crossed over so basically it's yeah like okay we've got chris's son, or travis's son with madison's daughter and they decide okay we're gonna go to like this rich person's house that has been completely abandoned Mm -hmm. and they start raiding through all the stuff. Um, Alicia starts like putting on like clothes and changes in the mirror Mm -hmm. and that's upstairs. And then Chris just happens to catch a look as Uh Alicia's changing in the mirror. Blink, blink. Yeah. And she's like, Oh, I guess I don't mind if you look. Uh huh. Yeah. And Chris is being like, oh, really awkward about it. Ooh, look at the time. Gotta go. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Even though he wants to look. Yeah, he does. It's it's, it's that whole puberty thing. They don't want to like each other either, though. Because Chris hates Madison. Well, I think Alicia was flirting with Chris. Because there's that whole scene where she's riding her bike. And she's like, this is my neighborhood. And then she's kind of like, you know, taunting. Yeah, but they they don't have any love for each other's parents at no, all. No. So they don't want to admit but, they like each other. So is it that or is it that they kind of see like they're both in similar circumstances so they bond over it? No, I don't think they want to like it. Because if you remember when they were um, at the trans house, right? they were fighting with each other. They didn't want to, like Alicia didn't want to say thank you for saving me. Well, she did elbow him. Right. And that's why he thought he had broke his nose and all that. Right. But so they but, there was a history there of but them. That's just that's just for, hating each other. foreplay, isn't it? Of course it is, but they <laughs> didn't know that. They don't understand foreplay I know, yet. I know that. Um yeah, of course. There's it's that a little thin rough, line. But yeah. There's that thin line thing. I yeah. think they might be understanding by now that there's a bit of attraction. It's but a thin line between love and hate. Yeah. I'm not gonna sing tonight. No. <laughs> Then you will understand exactly how sick I am. <laughs> but you don't want to make everybody out there suffer through my crappy singing. Yes, you're fine. Mm. You're much better than me right now. Mm, I wouldn't. I can't it. hear. Even how with a cold, you are still better than me. No, you have not heard me sing when I have a cold. It's not good. All right. So yeah, they're uh, they're kind of uh, have their little party. Inside the house, they dress yeah, like up, smash like, thing. like yeah, like she's in a in a, in a in a like a formal dress. He's looks like he puts on like a, a like a dinner jacket type thing. Yeah, and then they start smashing stuff, throwing plates down, jumping on the like, couch. He looks like a very rich hobo, right? Doesn't he? Yeah, he's like and, you no, know, he's like somebody that was like at a party. A really fancy party and got really bombed and drunk and ended up in an alley. Yeah, but and, his coat was too big, or maybe yeah. he put on someone else's coat. Or yeah, something. yeah, because it wasn't didn't quite fit. Right. Yeah. So he looked. He didn't look right in it. Right. Well, I don't think he was supposed to. Yeah, but she looked gorgeous. In yeah, it she did because she's even doing up her lit, doing her lipstick and all she that. A bracelet. bracelet. And she's doing the work in the accessories and yeah. She looked amazing. She had her hair up and she makeup was, all done. Alicia was working it. She was working it. Two snaps up in a twist. <laughs> That's right. She was fantastic looking. And I thought to myself, she is gorgeous in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't make her any less bratty, though. No, they're both, yeah, they're both being teenage punks. Yeah, acting so. out. Although I did think it was really funny what she was doing when she was on the bike with the ring ring. Yeah, she was I kinda, doing the little yeah, ring ring, yeah, and, and yeah. you know she was teasing him, right, with the snappy dialogue right. and stuff. And yep. Chris just was not getting it. Right. Well, this is my street, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ring ring. Yep. <laughs> it was I, really funny. I kind of like. I kind of like that scene. Yeah, like she was scene. funny. Yeah. But Chris was like, "What? Yeah, just so total." We, so we need more. Boy. We need more of Alicia not pining over her boyfriend and not being a, a jerk. We need her, yeah. like, making jokes. Yes. That was great. I yeah. thought that was really cute. It would be now, nice to have at least one likable teen on this show. I agree. Because all of them are jerks. Right. Now, mind you, losing her boyfriend 
Right. I get where she'd have the right to be upset. I do too. Right. But that was hilarious. It was hilarious. Yeah. So yeah. Ring. Points to <laughs> points to Alicia Debnam Carey for that scene. Yeah. Ring ring. Yep. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> that needs to be a sound effect. Does it? Ring ring. Maybe, yeah, maybe that. Not me doing it though. No, no, no. That's it's not right. funny yeah. anymore. I'm done. All right. So all uh, right. And then they, they as they're yes. walking back to they're, the house. They see like a convoy with you know, like trucks come by with troops in them. So something's obviously up. And the troops aren't paying attention to anything. No. Like they're not marking houses. They're not looking at anything. And Alicia notices that and says there's something funny going on. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's her intuition. Female intuition. No, just intuition. Okay. Because Alicia sense tingling. Yeah, her Alicia yeah. sense is tingling. Yeah. Um, and then you know they rush back home. Yep. So that's when everything is converging back home. Yeah. So um, and then we had Travis, of course, with Moyers. Uh, he was talking about like he wants to see uh, you know, family and friends. Moyers says it's up to the lady doctor. Mm-hmm. Exner. Yeah. And then Travis lays the whole, well, you know, the community might get really upset over this. Mm-hmm. So at that point... Moyers doesn't really give a crap. Yeah, no, well, Moyers kind of pauses for a bit, and then he's like, okay, tell you what, I've changed my mind. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do a little ride-along? Right. And Travis is like, wait, what? I thought you said we had to get the lady doctor's permission. And then Moyers gives his, like, great quote... I can do anything I want. I've got guns. Mm-hmm. Hello, Mr. Republican. I mean, what? <laughs> Did I say that out loud? No, well, there are Democratic gun nuts, too. Sure. But it's gun nuts. Yeah. No, yeah. no offense if you're a gun nut. but Or a Republican. Yeah. No I'm, offense. I'm an independent, so I go, you know. Me too. So I try I to vote for I, whoever. I, I try to think for myself. I'm yeah. Fun, I'm fun I vote for whoever stands for what I believe in. Exactly. So, uh, oh, and Moyers is giving his troops crap because they want sleep. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> you cry babies. You want some sleep? You know. Who needs sleep? Yeah. Sleep is for the weak. <laughs> I'm raising Jared, my hand. Jared is raising your hand. Yeah. <laughs> I need sleep. You need sleep? All right. Well, Not just... right now, but okay. at some point, yes. All right. Well, if you take a nap, I'll wake you up. All okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Yep. Okay, sorry. All right. All right. I'm I'll just up. Start. All right. I know we're doing this a little late, so... I'm tr- no, okay. Okay. It's not drowsy cold. Right. But... So on their way to the facility, we talked about this. Um, the soldiers see this walker in a restaurant, and it's this nice little waitress mm-hmm. who's now a zombie. Warrior oh. 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 sets, up, sets up his sniper rifle, and he's like, you know, there's, I guess, one of the troops offers to take out the, the zombie. Moyers is like, no. No, let Travis let do Travis it. Let Travis do it. Mr. Yep. Mr. Big Shot. Mr. That's right. Mr. Man of the People. Right on. Right on. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so Travis is like, he tries to call his bluff. Mm-hmm. Moyers. And he goes, all right. Yeah, all right. Let's do this. And so he goes over there, tries to get himself comfortable with the rifle and or the weapon and he aims and then he sees the name tag on the walker kimberly kimberly so it's basically putting a name to that z- blank zombie face humanizing it yeah yep. so and he chickens out yep even though there's a point being made here mm-hmm. where uh isn't it moyers that says you know do you think it's alive yeah and Travis says, well, if it is, then we've been committing murder right. hundreds of times. And, you know, of course it's not alive. So, so but Travis do, can't do it. Yeah. So he's even though he kind of knows in his head that that person is just a dead thing. He still, he still can't. He still, yeah. yeah. He hasn't quite and, found his, uh, his post-apocalyptic self yet. He hasn't now, had, had his Rick moment. Right. Now, aren't you finding this episode is kind of the um, dichotomy of Travis and Daniel needing each other, where Daniel has the guts to do what right. needs to be done and Travis doesn't? Yes. 
And it's showing that clearly in this episode. Right. I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're getting both sides of the spectrum here. Right. With, and I think this is that watershed. Yeah. Where the, he needs Daniel right. right now in this moment. It's showing that he just cannot, literally, he can't pull the trigger. Right. And Daniel can do whatever it takes. And we'll just... Lay open. <laughs> right. You know. Well, da to Daniel's credit, he's been through this before. Right. With, with the military. He's not the zombie apocalypse, but he's been through this kind of tough situation dealing with the military. And so he has his own mindset of what he needs to do. Right. To get through this. And it's almost a, a mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying a mirror. I mean, a literal mirror situation where um, Travis couldn't kill something that wasn't alive. Mm -hmm. And Daniel was torturing a human. That is alive. That is alive. And who his daughter was attached to had feelings for. Right. Um, and it ends up, you know, coming back to bite him a little bit when Ophelia comes down to find what's happening in the, in the basement of the trance house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, he doesn't like that Ophelia, he's hurt Ophelia, but he knows it had to be done. Right. Now, what about Madison when she stumbles upon what Daniel's doing? Because she kind of, at this point, you know, she can, first she looks like she's a little resistant to the idea. Then she's like, well, you know, we do what we got to do. Kind of has to get done. Yeah. yeah. And Madison. So, so is, I, Mad is Madison finally starting to break out of that naive Tay? I think she's that fulcrum point. She's going to be the thing that says, she's at the you guys got to work together. Yeah. Okay. She's going to be the thing that stops them from killing each other, I think. And the kids are going to be the things that are going to make us insane. Or is, or is um, Travis going to be the conscience? Of the group, because I don't know, as as Chris Hardwick pointed out nicely on Talking Dead, the <laughs> conscience of the group doesn't do very last very long. Yeah, they don't do well in the in the zombie apocalypse. Well, Travis seems like he's the bigger conscience mm -hmm. of the group. Right. I just feel like she's going to be the one to stop them from killing each other. She has less of a conscience yeah. at this point. Anyway. So is she out of Monopoly mode? <laughs> yeah, she is. <laughs> because for a while there, you know, as we made fun of, is that she's playing Monopoly, wanting everybody to play Monopoly while there's gunshots going on. She's like, right. la, 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 not listening, playing Monopoly. Oh, yeah, she's out of that. She's yeah. not playing games anymore. Right. Um, and I think that's fairly obvious when she's at the table and Chris is talking to Travis. And she just doesn't care whether yeah. Chris is going to apologize to her or not. She doesn't seem hurt by that yeah. at all. So do you think it was maybe the where she takes her little trip outside that yeah. kind of like that was the turning point for Madison? Yeah, she understood the reality of the situation. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And I think Travis understands the reality, but it's like he just can't allow himself to do that. He feels like it's going to take his last bit of humanity away from him. So we'll see where Travis goes. Yeah. I just uh, thought it was interesting to see both sides of no, that. No, it is. That's, that, that dichotomy is that's a great uh, observational point there. Yeah. So Thank you. You're very welcome. And I give credit where it's due. I'm sorry. All so right. You had a good point. Um, so I guess lastly, we, we have Liza yeah. helping Dr. Exner. And doesn't that just sound evil by itself, Dr. Exner? I know, right? Sounds like a Marvel supervillain, Dr. Exner. Yeah, and you know, I've been in the hospital a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately. I have too, but not as maybe and, not as much as you, but mm -mm, I did a, I did a seventeen day stint in the hospital. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we both for, know for, about for an exploded colon. So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well not yeah, it didn't Yucky. Ex didn't explode. It was going to explode. It went toxic. Still but yeah. Very bad. Yeah. Septic. Almost, almost killed me. But, Yuck. Yeah. Okay, so Six hours from death. Just At least we both know <laughs> yes. that doctors can be very evasive. Yes. Dr. Exner takes the cake, though. <laughs> she kind of right? goes a little, little overboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a doctor evade questions better than her. Shady doctor is shady. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but she is. Uh, where's Chris? Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to go on to this patient here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So anyway, Lies is helping uh, Shady Dr. Exner. Paging Shady Dr. Exner. Paging Shady? Okay. Um, and uh, Liza wants to see Griselda, Daniel's wife, wants to be reassured that she's being taken care of, and then gets told, like, hey, focus on the patients. Right. Just do your job. Right. Let's keep practicing on these patients. Yeah. And Don't worry about that. Hey, look over there, Skylab. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Pretty much. So, like, anyone treatable gets shipped one direction. Uh-huh. And anyone bitten gets quarantined. Yeah. So, Liza's like, uh, I'm going to run off and see Griselda now. Bye. Now, the part where they saw the guy who was bitten. Yeah. That was the only part of the episode that I thought was really, like, discordant. Okay. And it was almost like shaky cam and too long, I thought. Like it didn't it was, fit, didn't work with the rest of the scene? Yeah, it could have been shorter. Yeah. And they could have added a little bit more somewhere else, mm -hmm. I thought. Um, like it was just, you know, shaky cam in a hallway for like an extra. Yeah, minute. we're going to, yeah, the shaky cam. I'm a, I'm a big hater of shaky cam. Yeah. And I think it's being relied on too much, in my opinion, as a way like, oh, we got to show chaos. And the only way we right. can show chaos is to shake the camera around. Right. So that you can't follow what's going on. Right. It's exactly. It's cheap and it's stupid. Right. All they had to do is show them leaving the room quickly, show the guy back mm -hmm. there quarantining it off and then cut to the next yep. scene. And it's nauseating if you have motion sickness. But, you know. Yeah, just, it's not good. Yeah. So. It was just too much of just quiet. Right. With the shaky cam in a hallway. It, just. I was just like, fast forward already. Just get the damn tripod, hold the camera steady and show us what's going on. Right. Yeah. But that's just me. Or that's cut me. and go to another scene with some meat in it. Exactly. Totally agree. Um, Liza finds out that Griselda's in septic shock. Not good. Not good. Uh, and is apparently going to die even though they amputated her leg. Right. Which <laughs> means that <laughs> she had, oh yeah, blood poisoning, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Too much uh, bacteria got into her wound and poisoned her blood. Yeah. Before they could get rid of it. Yeah. Ouchie. Yeah. So, ouchie. of course, Griselda dies. <clears throat> yeah. Well, too, lots of talking mm -hmm. before dying. Yeah. And her eyes got all black. And there yeah. wasn't a lot yeah, of translation. But, yeah. Well, it, it was it was basically almost looked like she was cursing Dr. Exner. Mm -hmm. Like... You know, with my last breath, I stabbeth thee. <laughs> right. You know, like, <laughs> it like was. She's con, like she's con. You're like, yeah. But now, I took Spanish in high school, but I was like, yeah. I cannot translate that. Well, they had, had, you know, I was reading the subtitles. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was, it was, seemed to me basically like she was cursing Dr. Exner, like, you know, like, I'm going to die here, but you're going to be damned for eternity or something like to that effect. Okay. So you're an evil person and, you know, and I hate you and yeah. Okay. And then they're going to know what just, you're, they're going to know what you've done and blah, blah, blah. So, I wondered if she was talking about the world. Yeah. Or if she was talking about her immediate surroundings. Well, I think. Because I couldn't tell what she meant. Yeah. I think it was just, she was focusing on Dr. Exner because she was an example of all the horrible stuff that's, okay. that was going on. And I think they were using it as an yeah. allegory. I just, all I know is she got, Griselda got really chatty before dying. I know she did really chatty. It's like, okay. Really chatty. Yeah. And then she dies. And she was upset that she got taken away from her husband. Which, too. Understand, so they, understand. They lied. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah Griselda, and then. Griselda got a raw deal. With the nail gun right in her yep, forehead. Yep. Uh, well, uh, Exner offered, like, was going to shoot Griselda. She's, because mm -hmm. she. Tells Liza, well, you know she's going to come back. Right. So Liza takes the gun, does it herself. Yep. It's like a nail gun. Yep. It's gross. Yep. I don't know why shooting a big, like, shotgun-y thing doesn't bother me in these shows. But a nail gun does? But for some reason, a nail gun straight into the forehead at close range kind of grosses me out. Maybe because you're not distracted by all the blood. You can actually focus on the... 
Yeah, maybe. Or does it feel more like a needle? So you're like, oh, it's a needle to the head or something? Maybe. Maybe. Mm. I don't know why. And, you know, it's something different, too. Yeah, right. And, you know, I can see a nail gun being used in my house right. instead of a gun gun, which is used to shoot people. See, I'm used to, like, uh, FET on the strain using a nail gun all the time, so... Well, yeah. I've been, which has been fun, but... Yeah. Yeah. He loves his nail gun. Yeah. And then uh, Victor Strand. Yes. Now, I have an issue, a very small issue with Victor Strand, which I'm just going to bring up very quickly. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that they introduced him in episode five. Right. Like we're supposed to know who he is. Yes. Hey, look, here's this guy that you already know. Yes. What? Right. That was, that was that, disconcerting to me. That was that was my problem with that episode too, because you see this guy and you're like, you're sitting there going, "Okay, it, this is apparently somebody important. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we have been introduced first? Right. I mean, I understand That's if it's like, okay, this is how they're bringing him in. That okay, Nick is our gateway character to meeting um, this, you know, like this character. Right. But. Um, you know, it just I felt it, like, it felt forced. Right. And I felt like when I saw him, yep. was I supposed to notice him in like episode two or something? Was he already in? I you don't know, know, I felt like did I miss him somewhere? Like maybe he was in the crowd or something and then Right. You, but they, of course he was did, not. They did a quick cut and you're supposed to like, Oh yeah, it's that guy, but no. Right. But he wasn't. No. He was and not then, in it. The, and before you know it, he's like giving like the soldiers like uh you know what was it a ring, a watch and ring or something like that right and, he and, added a ring to the watch in yeah. order to keep nick, nick. yeah right. and so you're like well okay why is he bartering to keep nick and yeah well cuz nick's stronger than poor old Doug yeah who got carted off right so and we're supposed to like this victor dude <laughs> Even though he pushes Doug over the edge, poor old Doug. Yeah, well, yeah, because Doug, we you know, has got some emotional issues. Yeah, well. Yeah. Oh, well. So, anyway, um, he tells Nick that he's going to be making a move. Mm -hmm. With shows a key the, he palmed. Hey. Shows him the key. And I'm guessing he got the key with the watch. Right. And then he gives him the ring in order to... Right. Uh, Keep them from taking Nick, who has the elevated fever. Right. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I think he stole the key. Do you? Yeah. Because okay. that seems like something they wouldn't give him, even okay. with the barter trade. Okay. Because it would be their ass. So they just let him kind of wander a little bit unchecked yeah. for the watch. Right. Okay. And then he palmed the key. At yeah, some somehow. Point. I don't know how he got it, but he got it. So, uh, so yeah, that's basically kind of where we're left. And he is testing yeah. the inmates there to see who he wants to take with him. Right. To see who's strong enough to help him with his escape plan. Yeah. Okay. And apparently Nick is part of that plan. Well, Nick's pretty strong. I can see where he's, he'd he's, re he's resourceful. Right. So we'll he's see. not going to break. Yeah. He doesn't break, apparently, when, yeah. when Victor talks to him and they call him strand mm -hmm. in the credits and everything yeah they were they never referred to him by his first name this is victor was this here was the first time i heard that his first name was victor because in this podcast yes right here oh I'd, i see yeah because his never, name is victor strand victor strand. i knew his last name strand because now not that i didn't find him intriguing because the way he speaks is very interesting yeah he's very he's a smooth talker you know, tries to dress to the nines, you know, like uh, Mr. Cool. Doesn't it kind of make you wonder why they took him? Pretty much, because you think somebody with money would somehow be able to avoid that. Right. Like he'd be off with the other rich people somewhere. Right. Unless he pissed off somebody mm -hmm. or did something he shouldn't. Right. So I think there's more to his story. We'll find I out. I think so, too. And the last right. thing we, we kind of have is that Daniel goes outside and finds that the doors are chained up with sounds of walkers pushing through on the other side. Right. Well, he's checking out um, Adam's story mm -hmm. that they put a bunch of civilians in the arena right. when they were getting unruly uh, and they locked it up. Yep. And so he goes to check out, uh, and he hears them all. Yep. They have all turned on each other and made themselves into walkers. 
Herschel's oh. Barn, just saying. Yeah. If you yep. remember Herschel's Barn, you know that this Times is not going to go well. A yeah. thousand. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing it's bigger, like a much bowl bigger or scale. Something. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you give this episode? I gave it mm -hmm. uh, eight heavy duty chains around nice. the doors on the arena. Nice. And I give this one eight out of eight and a half out of ten shaving kits. Shaving kits. <laughs> Why would you pick shaving kits? I think this one actually moved things along a lot. Right. Well, and the psychological implications of this episode intrigued me, as you can mm -hmm. tell by the way I discussed it. Well, that's so, why that's why I liked it too, because I mean, it kind of it elevated the threat. Things are coming to a head, and yeah. um, you know, I just it, it there seems like you know, like the pieces are kind of starting to come together. Yeah. Of where the show is going to be going. I, I would have given this a nine, but I had to deduct for um, Victor right. being introduced like, what? Yeah. Um, the fact that it is episode five out of six. Yeah. And now finally we're getting movement. Well, <laughs> and, to, to be fair, The Walking Dead was slow its first season. I agree. Although we did have accompanying material with that. Yes, we did. So... At least there was that to be said. Right. And then what was the third thing? There was something else I had an issue with. What okay. was it? Okay, Rick Perry. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> what was the middle thing again? <laughs> Oops. Yes, I see what you did there. Uh, oh, yeah, the shaky cam in the hallway thing. Yeah, yeah. I had a nit with that, too. Every time I watched it, I watched it twice or yeah. three times. I hate you. And that shaky cam thing, I had to, like, fast forward through it. The second, third time I was just I don't like, blame you. it's a waste of time. Don't even so, waste my time with that. That's right. right. So I actually think it was a nine worthy episode, but for but it those got to, little things. It had demerits. Correct. Taken off. Okay. Yep. All right. Gotham. Knock, knock. Written by Ken Woodruff. Directed by Rob Bailey. Ken Woodruff from The Mentalist and... Uh, the same guy who created Gotham created The Mentalist, just as an FYI. Okay, Bruno Heller? Yes. Hmm. I think. I know he, he had created, something know, to do with The Mentalist. Okay. Hold on. Maybe he's a producer or something? That's all right. I just know he created Rome, but... Hold on a minute. Come on, you stupid internet slowing down. Internet shakes fist. It's a slowing down thing. So, um... This episode, I felt in general, was should have been the season two premiere, right? Did am I alone? In, I'm not alone in that. No, you are not. I thought this was a much better episode. This was a great episode. Um, much more interesting, uh, much better flowing episode. So we'll we'll kind of get into it here. Um, well, basically, it's the introduction of the maniacs. They're maniacs, maniacs on the floor. <laughs> yeah. With the X. With the X. Because the My X browser is not X, working. Because the X is for extreme. That's right. Yeah. Okay. But, uh. Yes, Bruno Heller. Yes. Bruno Her Heller was involved with The Mentalist. Okay, I didn't know that. He wrote all 151 episodes of The Mentalist. Well, that would be involved now, wouldn't it? Mm hmm. Okay, even J. J. Michael Straczynski thinks that's a little too much. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. So, um, yes, they have worked together before. Okay. Um, and directed by Rob Bailey, who uh, also directed The Wire, CSI, all of CSI New York, and Criminal Minds. Well. So, sorry. That's okay. That's good. All right. Okay. I all have right. this broken up, too, if you want. Okay. I was just gonna I run. I was, just... I was just gonna give a rundown of the maniacs. Okay, please do. Okay, just real quick. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's cold medicine. <laughs> that's okay. You get. You did all the work you wanted. You wanted to pay off. I get it. That's cool. No, it's the cold medicine. Okay. I'm distracted. I told you I'd be distracted. <laughs> do you find me distracting? No. Hi, Rob. Yeah. Welcome to editing. <laughs> Okay, the maniacs. Uh, obviously, we've got Jerome, played by Cameron Monaghan. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm then, not going to say anything about him right now. No, we're not. We're going to leave that go for a little bit. I'm just going to let that yeah. lie there. And, of course, we've got Barbara Keene, 
who's uh-huh. doing her best Harley Quinn impression. Yep. Except we can't say Harley Quinn because that's owned by someone else right now. Well, the Suicide Squad. Right. So the movie. So they the, can't really call her anything. No, but esque. Well, it's a little too soon to be having Harley anyway, because Bruce isn't even Batman yet. Right. So, and we don't have the Joker. What? Or, or do we? Oh. What? Yeah. Or I do don't we? know. What, that, that, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Um, yeah. <laughs> Except just, it's not, because yeah. everyone knows we're recording this after the yeah. next episode. Yeah, we're a little late because of health issues. <laughs> Because of my cold. We'll get back on track. <laughs> we promise. All right. And we also have uh, the cannibal Robert Greenwood. Uh-huh. And Arnold Dobkins, who's just a rapist. I'm not sure why he's really part of this group, but well, he was just around, I guess. Not not long yeah. for this group. Anyway. Not long for this group. Um, and we have Aaron Helsinger, who's better known to Batman fans as Amygdala. Amygdala. So we actually get a villain. Or Amygdala. From the comics. Dala. Amygdala? Yeah. I prefer Amygdala. Well, that's how I remember how to spell it. Yeah. That's, it. yeah. Um, Amy, Amy Gadala. Amy Gadala. Amy G. G- Amy G. Dala. Right. Yeah. Like Roy G. Biv, I guess. I don't right. Know. So, um, okay. So what are your three... That's that's my rundown of the maniacs. Well, the A story I have, Bruce tries to forge ahead after deciding he has the true calling his father wrote about. Mm-hmm. Before he can find out anything, Alfred destroys Dr. Wayne's computer. Computer. Bruce fires him. <laughs> computer. Computer. Bruce fires him and he leaves the mansion. Eventually, Bruce goes to him before he can leave Gotham. By the way, I wrote this. I wrote this personally. <laughs> so... I'm reading it from me writing it. Okay. I'm not plagiarizing anyone. Okay. okay. I'm just letting this be known. Uh, Bruce goes to him before he can leave Gotham. Alfred is contrite, and Bruce asks if he can use his experience to guide him, dot, 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 mm-hmm. and fix the computer. Alfred kills two birds with one stone by going to Lucius, knowing he's the one that set Bruce on this mission. He persuades him to join their team dot 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 and with laser with laser beams <laughs> right and to fix the computer yeah and then the b story is essen announces her intention to fight the maniacs with full force putting gordon on lead theo sets his master plan in motion which we still don't know and i put a uh, mayoral run or putting someone in that seat right. or you know, some sort of a puppet master type thing Um, by keeping the mayor out of commission and guiding his team of misfits in making headlines with some brutal crimes. One Mm -hmm. threw shipyard workers off the paper's roof, spelling out maniacs exclamation point. (laughs) Number two, tried to set a busload of cheerleaders on fire. Fire, 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 fire. (laughs) Three, (laughs) Police station massacre resulting in the death of Sarah Essen. And how many cops did we find out this week? Six uh, or eight or it something? Was a, yeah, it's quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, Bullock Gordon, returns. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say Gordon makes some comment about that we lost X amount of brothers. Right, but it's in the next episode. Yeah. I just can't remember what yeah, he said. I, I can't this week. Um, Bullock returns, and by the end of the episode, the maniacs are down to... Jerome, Barbara, and Aaron, Amygdala, and various henchmen, because mm-hmm. there are other henchmen that run right. around. There's around. like an outer circle. Right. And there's always henchmen. They're like maniacs wannabes. Right. Hangers on. Well, yeah. And then there's a very small sea story where Ed Nigma fights with himself when trying to ask out Chris Kringle. I kind of love Saves her. her. I know. <laughs> Saves her from a bullet while taking one himself in the station gunfight. Yep. So that's what I have. Okay. So let's talk about um, Theo and Tabitha. Let's do. And uh, so we've got James. She's a piece of work. Yeah. We, we've, we get a real good taste of James Frain as Theo Galavan. Oh, he's so awesome. And who's, you know, like the bad guy in just about everything. Yeah. And Jessica Lucas as Tigress, his mm-hmm. sister. Sister. Yeah, I I still don't know whether she's good or not in this. Well, I think she's, I think she's 
bad, but maybe she will flip. No, no. I don't mean whether her character is good or not. Oh. I mean, like, I know James Frain is excellent oh. in this already. Okay. I don't know. As an actor, as a performance. Well, I'm sure she's fine in it, but right. I don't know whether she's going to excel as right. Tigress or not. Yeah. Because they haven't really given us much with her. No. Even seeing the next episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've seen her, you know, do a few more things in she, the next she, episode. She almost but. feels like... Um, Instead of his sister, she feels more like um, Theo's henchman. Yeah, she so. does. Sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, the w- female character is kind of under underwritten. Yeah. Just Which bit. is kind of, uh, you know, yeah. something I definitely wanted to mention. Yeah. Um, Barbara is getting written a little better. But all, again... All they, all they had to do was make her crazy to make her right. inter- interesting. Right. And I made They the, turn her into um, yeah. Jerome, but yeah. a female. Yeah. I, t- I I made the comment like you know like she finally got a personality but it just happened to be Harley Quinn's right exactly that's better than nothing yeah so um, Theo and Tabitha are apparently into the kinky right uh, they show up at Mayor James's house uh, fasten a box to his head <laughs> with a little gate on the front right with a little gate and then like uh, Tigress is kind of whipping him. With the cat and nine tails. Cat and nine yeah. tails. Yeah. So it's a little bondage thing going on yeah. here. Interesting. And Babs is helping. And then Theo gets a little sadistic, saying, like, tells uh, Mayor James uh, that he'll put a spider inside the box yeah. unless uh, the mayor tells his secretary that he's run off with his mistress. Uh huh. And he has to leave specific instructions, mm-hmm. which we find out later. But, and the uh, mayor spills and they go, oh, I'm just yeah. kidding. There's no spiders. And then Theo tells him, like, monsters are coming, Mr. Mayor. Monsters mm-hmm. who will cleanse this city in blood and fire. Yeah. But another really good performance by Richard Kind. Yes. Even in a box. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> I, I love the bit where he's, like, walking along and he hits the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and, fall, and he just falls, falls over. He falls over. So good. <laughs> He's great in that you can see out of that thing. I mean, I totally get why he would walk sure. the wall, but still. It's like having blinders on. I just couldn't help but laugh. I know. It's like you're you're supposed to be thinking, oh, this is such a weird scene. And then you just laugh because he <laughs> walks into that wall. Right. Pratt fall. Point. It's, yeah. it's, it's total slapstick, and I loved it. Well, he's like a walking, uh, living cartoon. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, the whole show is a living cartoon. Yeah. It's very campy, to say the least. I mean, the only show that might be campier was the 1966 Batman show. That one is way campier. Not eh, sometimes, not by much. This one is way more violent. Yeah, well, this is violent. Much darker. It's dark camp, but it's still camp. All right. I think. What What it's, you say? It's not serious drama. Well, see, the Bruce Wayne storyline, I think, is much mm-hmm. less campier. Well... Okay, I will give you the Bruce storyline. Thank you. Take out all that slapsticky stuff. But, you know, when you've got the villains acting over the top and you've got everybody's, like, the cops' reactions, okay. over-the-top reactions, and Batman fi- villains. fish, and fish, and the penguin, and it's a bit get out, get out your Get out your little yeah. uh, magnifying glass and look at the Batman villains. I know, I know. Look at them with their purple suits and their question marks all over them and their little I know. you know things with their okay crazy heads they're all like that his villains are weirder <laughs> than most villains right i understand that they're like dick tracy okay. villains but yeah they are they're kind of campy yeah all right so uh the next scene i, I thought was hilarious because it's the gotham gazette building mm-hmm. and this editor is chewing out a staff over the sensationalist, like the kind of, um, what is it? The uh, kind of the gossipy headlines and whatnot. He's like, yeah, oh, you get missing mayor. Yeah, of the missing mayor. And they're like, and they're talking about like the mistress and stuff like that. So um, he's like, you guys, you know, get yourself some real news or whatever. And then <laughs> well, all of a sudden, well, r- yeah, right behind him and right behind him, uh, these bodies are falling. In the window behind him, you see one, two, three, and it feels like a Monty Python skit. It does. Because if you remember, there was a 
a a a great Monty Python skit um, where these two guys are working in an office. It's like John Cleese and Eric Idle, and they're just kind of typing along. And then all of a sudden, Eric Idle sees a body come down through the window, and he goes, "Did you just see that?" And he goes, "No, I didn't see that." And then another body comes down, and he sees like you know he sees that the, there's a second body. He, Eric Idle tells John Cleese, you know, there's like these bodies coming down. And then he's like, look, there's two, three people. No, three people as three, the third person drops. And, you know, three people have just gone past the window downwards. And John Cleese says, well, it must be a staff meeting. <laughs> and <laughs> so then, <laughs> then they get, they actually start going up to the window and start betting on who, betting on who's going to jump next. next. And they're like, they're like, Eric Idle says Parkinson next. And then John Cleese is like, no, 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 it's not going to be him. And then Eric and Eric Idle's really insistent. He goes, yeah, Parkinson, Parkinson next Fiverr. And then he goes, all right, you're on. And then Eric Idle's like, come on, Parky, come on, Parky. You can do it. Jump, jump. <laughs> And then John Cleese is like, no, don't do it, Parky. Don't think, think of your wife. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and so that's the skit. Okay, that's hilarious. It is a great skit. Check it down. Um, I'm not doing it justice, of course, but it's on the yeah. That's, but that's pretty funny. It's on uh, the and now for something completely different movie by Monty Python. I don't remember that. It's a, I have the movie, but yeah, it's a great skit. That's hilarious. Yeah, love it. So anyway, I got that from this scene. Excellent. Um, yeah, I thought it was funny. He's standing there yelling at them, and there's these bodies yes, just yeah. falling. And down. there's this, yeah, and it takes them these great reporters. It takes them three bodies dropping to the ground before they even bother bother looking out the window. I know. So I'm like, well, there's there's and a, even then they there's a crack about, news team. Yeah, they don't think about going to find out. Yeah. So what's happening? And as you said, it like the bodies are hitting the pavement in the exact spelling of the group name maniacs. Brilliant how that works out. Which is amazing physics that they can drop these bodies off the roof and then it'll spell out perfectly. Right. Especially with Jerome leading it. Yeah. Because he knows exactly how that works. Okay. Yeah. That was a little eye roll for me, but yeah. It is spray painted. Yeah. So it's not like he has to make the people into the shape of the M. But still. But still, it's a stretch. It is a stretch, yeah. Uh. Commissioner Essen, which I think, you know, just it's at least Commissioner or Sarah Essen gets a little promotion, however short lived. Very little. Very short lived. Uh, and Gordon Phil, the rest of the GCPD in on the maniacs. Mm-hmm. And we have, so uh, they get a little crash course and we get introduced to each member of the maniacs, a little up to speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Theo congratulates the maniacs on their overture. His, mm-hmm. his words. And this is where uh, Robert the cannibal, they kind of hate each other. Robert the cannibal and Jerome. So they s- decide to settle their differences on who should be leader of the maniacs by playing Russian roulette. Yeah. And to decide who's going to be the leader. Robert fires first. And Jerome, and then... Jerome counters by firing four more times in a row. Right. And hands the gun over, says, okay, go ahead. I guess I'm the leader now. <laughs> yep. So Jerome becomes the leader. Yeah. Which was a great move. I love that scene. Yeah. So. Except if one of the bullets was actually in there. Yeah. Wouldn't it be hilarious if it, like they were all blank? <laughs> sure. So. But, or if maybe yeah. he died one episode early. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. What? What? Spoilers? Shame on you. Who, me? River Song would be very disapproving of you right now. With what? All these spoilers. Oh, no. Shh. Our listeners, if they watch it, they've already seen it. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Hopefully you've seen it by now. Uh, yeah, so we've got Bruce trying to make the his dad's computer work. Alfred smashes it because he wants to keep Bruce safe. Alfred smash! Yeah, pretty much. And Bruce fires Alfred. Although I'm trying to figure out, how do you fire your legal guardian? I think it was a calculated risk that Alfred was taking. Mm -hmm. That he figured Bruce would come after him at some point. Right. Bruce is lucky he didn't call child 
services Thanks. on Alfred. Like, hey, he just left me. No. Yeah, I think that was Not the deal. deal. Uh, yeah, and I do think it was quite an overreaction on Alfred's part as well. Yeah, I think they were both at fault in this scene. I agree. Bruce has his tantrum. Yeah. And Alfred kind of has a tantrum with a computer. So. Yeah. I... But I did like the fact that Bruce says, okay, we can, we can like patch this up. Alfred's condition is that young master Bruce resumed training and does everything Alfred says. I'll even go to school. Gasp. Gasp. Yeah, I know. What a concept. Uh, Bruce's, con- Bruce's condition is hilarious where he says uh, he wants Alfred like, okay, I'll do this on the condition that you find someone to fix that computer. Right. Which is Well, he doesn't say find someone. He says fix it. Fix it, yeah. Right. That's true. You're right. And Alfred, there's no way Alfred's going to be able to fix it. Yeah, So. And so Alfred goes to Lucius, blaming him. Played by Chris Chalk. Yeah, oh, he's so good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Blaming him for setting Bruce on this path in the first place Mm -hmm. in his incredibly good... SAS, I'll get you. Yes. Uh, I'll I'll <laughs> kill you with this thumb impression. Um, You'll never even see it coming. Right. And I like that, you know, can I trust you? Yes. Well, um, whatever I say could be a lie. So, yeah. you know. Well, he's telling him basically, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but he basically says, okay, look, if we're going to work together for Bruce's sake, we need to we need to work together. For, oh, he's saying really, we need to work together for Bruce's sake. But right. in order to do that, I need to be able to trust you. Right, and it's too late. You've already let the horse out of the barn. Right. So I might as well start trusting you now. Yeah, and we got because clean, you set him on this path. Yeah. You already know all. So the now I got to clean up stuff. your mess. Right. Yeah. So you might as well come in mm-hmm. on this whole thing, but. If you hurt him, or if you betray us in any way, I can take you out. Yeah, pretty much. Is essentially what he's saying. Mm-hmm. With my little finger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, he does a really, he, he does a good menace. Yes, he does. Well, if you know his father, yeah, he can Yeah, it's menace. a good pedigree. He's, yeah, pretty much. A Pertwee pedigree. Yeah, Sean Pertwee. I mean, if you've seen him on, like, Sean Pertwee on Elementary or... Uh, the tutors or any of the other projects he's done. Uh, he's a great actor. So yeah, he can do that. Um, Gordon tries to get Harvey back with the GCPD, but Harvey is apparently whipped by his fiance, Scotty. Yeah, half and half. Maybe uh, he doesn't, there's part of him that doesn't want to go back. Right. And then part of him that doesn't want to go back because he wants to be with her. So he's kind of using her as an excuse. Is what you're kind saying. of okay, but but I think she is. But she's a little controlling. A a, a lot controlling. Okay, so yeah, which you probably have to be to be with Harvey Bullock. Yes, definitely. But Scotty, really? That's. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to figure out where that name came from. Not yeah. to mention the engagement, but okay. Yeah. Because we're just told. Oh, by the way, we're engaged. We don't yeah. really get any backstory with it. No, none. Again, yeah, it's a female that is yeah just complete, underwritten, underwritten, yeah, a face, yeah, or at least the character that exists only to enhance the male character, right? So. Right. Absolutely no backstory, right? And and looks bad, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah, um, we've got uh, the maniacs, of course, hijacking the school bus full of teenagers, which was a great scene. Yep. Uh, Jerome pouring gasoline all over them, but his lighter doesn't work. <laughs> A little performance issues there, Jerome. <laughs> and my Mythbusters yeah. alarm goes off because yeah. yeah, this just cannot happen. <laughs> <laughs> you A lighter... Oh. Yeah. Go watch the Mythbusters about setting lighter fluid on fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just go do it. Yeah. There's there's a lot of things that have to come together. Yeah. As soon as you flick that thing, yeah. As soon as a spark, right. You don't have to get the flame, right. At all. The spark alone would set off the gasoline. Correct. Yes. Any bit of gasoline yeah. on your hands. And, the, and these girls were drenched in it. Right. So yeah, they should have gone up like that. Right. Yep. So a uh, shootout ensues. 
goes. Arnold, the rapist, gets left behind. The therapist. Ther- yeah, I'm sorry. I see, I see what you did there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Gordon ends up driving that school bus to safety. Yeah. And Arnold gets... Just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. That's because right. he's here to save the day. Now, what sets the, the gasoline on fire? A match? Something like that. Yeah, which wouldn't happen, yeah. by the way. Because the liquid and the alcohol would put out the match. <laughs> And again, that's my Mythbusters knowledge. Because a, ma- a fire on a match is not a spark. Okay. It's the spark that sets off the fire. Okay. Got it. <laughs> but the liquid in the gasoline overpowers the fire. You're a buzzkill. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, science geek. What does my t-shirt say? I see it. Resistance is futile with the resistance symbol. Yeah, thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Arnold gets shot in the head by Sniper Tabitha. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, who is there just to save the day? Well, so in this they keep, entire keep, episode, keep Arnold from questioning him and actually learning something, right? And moving things forward. But you know, hey. So she is there in order to keep their secret and to play uh, comedy of errors. With the mayor in the right. beginning. Yes. And that's pretty much all she is. In this yep. Episode. Doesn't quite uh, pass the Bechtel test. No. <laughs> not at all. God, Go- this Gotham would not pass the Bechtel test at all, would it? No. No, I don't think so. Arrow would not pass the Bechtel test. Nope. It uh, wouldn't. No. Just saying. Well, I don't know. Mm, I'll have to think about that because yeah. there's yeah. Felicity and... Uh, Laurel. That's true. Well, and maybe. they might have conversations that aren't about a male. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I know Iris and Caitlin have. That's true. So I think. So the Flash probably. I, th- I, th- I think the Flash, yeah, passed it eventually. Yeah. It did took a while, but it, they got. We might have to have a special. I think we Bechtel episode. test. Bechtel episode. Yeah, okay. we should. We maybe we can do that. Especially when we maybe, have... Maybe we don't have six episodes to go through, but... Yes. Sure. <laughs> when half of our podcast is female, we really should have yeah. one dedicated to the Bechtel test. Yeah. Not that I'm a huge feminist or we, anything. No, but. we could just run it down, just for the sake of, you know, just something to talk about. Sure. And uh, kind of point out some of the obvious, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, Edward Nigma. Yes, this was... I love this scene... Where, he is one of my favorite characters on the I, show. He's not getting enough screen time. I agree. I mean, I understand he's they're slow building with the Riddler, but it needs to pick up just a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. Just I agree. Bit he only got like this one I mean, and a half scenes in here. Because we got like the first season one, we got the penguin. Boom, 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 boom. Right. We need that with the Riddler. Right. That's just my opinion. Now... With what happens in the next episode, which we've already seen. Yes. Do you think he will have more screen time? Well, I'm sure he will. But the problem is there's all this other stuff going on. Right. So when is it going to become move off of the back burner plot and become the A plot? You know, like the front burner. Plot. Right. Well, it is rise. Sorry, of the I just villains. mixed my metaphors there. No, but no, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Move from the back burner to the front burner. How's that? Yeah. Okay. It's Rise of the Villain, so let's hope that he finally cracks. Right. So maybe, and maybe, maybe he gets time, recruited. Maybe about the time that we get to the uh, winter break. Okay. Maybe that we'll see something me. something significant. Sure. The story, like about episode nine, I'm guessing, or or whatever, whatever it will be by then. Yeah. That's okay. Because I'm guessing we'll have some repeats, but half a season of of him as the Riddler would be good. Yep. So, uh, anyway, he's, uh, Edward encounters Kristen Kringle, mm-hmm. his would-be love interest in the records annex. And with the gun. No, I'm the, sorry. Yeah, wrong exactly. Thing. Wrong thing. Um, he attempts to ask her out and, of course, fails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Edward sm- he gives himself a right talking to. Yeah, yeah, he does. Because other, Edward's more smoother persona uh, wants to try seducing Kringle because... Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> You're a weenie, Edward. Only I can seduce her. 
I can ask her. I out. can ask her out. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I and, like that. And Edward it, it monologue thing. Yeah, Edward just goes ballistic mm-hmm. at this at himself in the mirror, having this conversation with it. Basically, it's it's Edward Nigma's Gollum moment. Right. Where he's having a conversation with his own split personality. Mm-hmm. And he screams at his person, pers- other persona to leave him alone. Right. And Kristen Kringle is his pretty. Yep. Get a roll and never come back. <laughs> now, I didn't notice this until later, but there's also a, and please pardon this expression because it's lame, but yep. there's a mirror in this episode of Ed looking at himself, dual personalities in the mirror. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then um, Gordon looking at himself in the mirror at the beginning and end right. of the episode as well. You're getting a lot of dichotomy themes going tonight. I always do that. That's good. I learned how to watch TV from Farscape, remember? <laughs> good point. So. I see. I see where you're coming. They from. never do anything by accident in nope. Farscape. It's all connected. And I do know that the people that write Gotham mm-hmm. set up scenes like that on purpose, like they book in an episode, right, with similar scenes. Well, so like, I know no, they when, do it on purpose. Well, the writers' room when they sit down in the writers' room, they map out the entire season so they can like, right. like okay, in this episode we drop this, in episode three we drop this. And that pays off later in episode nine or whatever. Right. So right. yeah, it's 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 all like it's planning. Right. Now there are shows where I would say something like that, and I go, "Oh no, that's just a coincidence. Yeah. They they didn't actually mean to do that." Mm-hmm. But I would say Gotham would kind of make me think about it every once in a while. That it'd be like, oh, I don't know whether they're that clever or not. Yeah. But in this case, I do think that they meant it to be similar. You know, kind of parallel storylines. So, so um, Gordon gets a phone call from Barbara, and Barbara says that she's in the precinct. Mm-hmm. She's calling from inside the house. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I made that joke. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So maybe you shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't. Ras- oh, that raspy, hurt. Raspy voices in a cold dome. Oh, they man. don't really go mix well together. Just, oh, that really hurt. Just saying. But anyway, so Gordon goes looking for, finds Amygdala instead. Don't. Yep. Yeah, not good. Who immediately beats Gordon to a pulp? What a dummy. Amygdala smash. Yeah. He and, did remind me of Hulk. Yeah. Now, Barbara stops him from killing Gordon mm-hmm. and then tells Gordon, well, you know, I don't need your help, dude. Right. I'm doing just fine. Mm-hmm. Being crazy. Crazy's working out for me. People like me better. They stop hating on me on Twitter. It's all good. So, uh, Jerome and Robert go inside the GCPD. Uh, massacre ensues. And massacre ensues. Edward saves Kristen Kringle from being killed. Mm-hmm. So, which persona saved her? My hero. Yeah, I questioned that yep. as well. Yep. My hero. You questioned the Riddler? <gasps> No, I mean, I no, no. I uh, put that in my notes. Okay, yeah. That, you know, um, how is that going to be yeah. something? Leslie, Leslie immediately ducks under a medical examiner's table. Yeah. And uh, so basically you've got one female being saved, another hiding. And a and third, another... fe- third female, Sarah Essen, gets confronted by Jerome, who tells her the maniacs will leave a mark on this city and spread like a virus. Yep. And then Robert, the cannibal, ends up stepping on Jerome's punchline, which, bad move on his part, so Jerome shoots him. Mm-hmm. Jerome then records Essen's struggle with him and then kills her. Right. So Now, this was the guy he was playing uh, Russian roulette with, right? Yes. So he finally does end up with that bullet. Yes. Mm-hmm. He was saving it, probably. <laughs> see what I did there? I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. That bullet, and then, uh, bullet had his name on it. That's right. Amygdala is out there in the in the alley with Barbara and uh, Gordon, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, have you ever read Flashpoint? Yes. It's the Flash. Of course I've read Flashpoint. But it's also got a, point, a part in there about Batman. Yes. 
where he uh, meets up with Batman, and it's actually uh, Thomas Wayne. Thomas Wayne. Bruce's father. Because mm-hmm. Bruce gets killed in that alley. Yep. And uh, when they do the little flashback to it, um, his mother is cradling Bruce, and when she comes up, she wipes her hand. Yeah, and the Joker like smile. And the Joker smile. And if you notice, when Barbara mm-hmm. kisses james gordon on the ground when she yeah. comes up she's got that same like yeah blood on her mouth okay. just like that so now, do you think so again you... i'm not thinking that she's jokerizing herself but it it was very iconic looking from that flashpoint storyline she had her hair yeah. looking almost the same way and yeah. everything and it was in an alley mm-hmm. i just wondered if they were trying to make it look that way well, I think they did say, uh, Bruno Heller did say something in like an interview or something this week that they've considered the possibility of a female Joker. Well, so there you go. But it's, that's a pretty major dynamic change. It is. So it's a risky move. Not saying it they is. could, not saying they won't do it. I wouldn't be against it, to be honest. But, but again, you've got a Joker that would be much older than Bruce. Yeah. So. Well, would that be that bad? Mm-hmm. Although why he would name, why James would name his daughter, his daughter, Barbara. Yeah. Again, it doesn't make sense. That, that would totally take right back girl right off the table. I would think. Say so we're not going to do that. It did really, really take me back to Flashpoint. Yeah. With the blood on the mouth. Yeah. Because it was very, very similar to that panel in the now, comic. it could also be misdirection like hey we're just messing with sure. you so sure like yeah. again like, like the yeah. next episode yeah pretty much you guys have seen already yeah. i'm sure yeah so. uh lastly uh bruce arrives to make sure gordon's okay just because apparently he's looking out for gordon yep no and real, also... no no real reason for him to be there mm-hmm. uh gordon goes to essen's office harvey's there like hey i'm back yeah and then they end up and watching you need me. Yeah, you need me. And then they end up watching Jerome's video. Jerome tells Gotham they ain't seen nothing yet. Yep. And laughs like the joke. All craziness. Yeah. yeah. Doing it doing his best Jack Nicholson impression. <sighs> Why do you people do this? What? They're all doing an impression of the Joker. I know that. <laughs> Of course they're doing a Jack Nicholson impression because he did an impression of the Well, there's, there's the Mark Hamill Joker, which doesn't sound like the Jack Nicholson Joker. No, but they're all doing an impression of the Joker. <laughs> so uh, what did you end up giving this episode? Um, I actually kind of like this one. Yeah. Um, I gave it, where am I? Up here. Um, eight Chainsaw Sword Fights. Nice. And that was just before the Russian roulette. Yeah. Uh, Jerome think, gets out a, a chainsaw right. to fight against the sword. Right. I dug it. Yeah, I kind of like this episode, too. I actually gave it a little higher. Uh, I give this one eight and a half out of ten bodies dropped off the roof off the Gotham Gazette building. Yeah, I thought it was a decent yep. episode. And good. like you said, it should have been last week's episode. It should have been the premiere. I think right. It, it would have been a much stronger opening and... Yeah, maybe roll some of those elements yeah. from last week. Or, into- or it could have been a two-hour premiere. There combine, you go. Combine those two episodes. That would have been a much stronger. Push them up. Yeah. yeah, that's what I Perfect. would have done. But that's me. Yeah. The writer. But hey. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Okay, lastly, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Laws of yeah. Nature. Okay, before we start, I have two very important things to say about this episode. Okay. Okay. You, did, you didn't watch it. <laughs> No, I did. Okay. I loved this episode, by the way. Oh, good. There are two very important story points that we need to cover. Okay. Okay. Hunter's Bobby Morse impression. <laughs> yes. And Coulson's grumpy cat mug. Okay. He drank out of a grumpy cat mug. <laughs> you thought it was, it was just adorbs. Those were the best parts of this episode. <laughs> by far. I was trying to make you laugh. Yeah, yeah but... it worked. It okay, worked. Good. that was good. Hunter's Bobby Morse <laughs> impression was hilarious when they were sitting there and he gave back a ring. Yep, it was great. It was good. Anyway, so, so this episode was written by Jed Whedon. Correct. 
and, and Mar- Marissa Tencherowin. Right. That Schoeners. name. You, that that name you can't pronounce. That's right. I cannot. I'm not good at it. At <laughs> it, it just doesn't click, does it? Turner Sherwin. Sure, yeah. I Ten- can't do it. Tencherowin. But anyway, and directed by Vincent Missiano. Now, hang on just a sec. Yep. Uh, Law and Order. Let me give you just a few. The Lone Gunman. Okay. Uh, Ed, The West Wing, Third Watch. That's more than a few. Mm-hmm. Uh, Commander in Chief, The 4400, okay. Killer Instinct, uh, Dr. Vegas, which I had never heard of. And then he became involved with the second season of Fox action series Prison Break. Okay. Medium. That's a pretty diverse resume. Eli Stone. Yeah, that's kind of... And then Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Resurrection, Agent Carter, Mysteries of Laura. Oh, she... So... Okay. Lots of things. Lots of things. I I didn't have room to write them all there, so I put in a link. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, basically, we're catching up uh, with the agents, of course, being this is the season premiere. Uh, also, we're... I heard he makes really good grumpy cat mugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it, my medicine's wearing off. That that should have been your your, your rating. Grumpy, Grumpy cat, cat mugs. Grumpy no. cat mugs. All right. So um, we we pick up um, with uh, we have um, the former Sky now Daisy Johnson officially Daisy Johnson. She's calling herself Daisy Johnson. Yeah. And also known as Quake. Mm-hmm. And Quake is essentially leading ops team or missions. Mm-hmm. And the first one we have is where we have a new Inhuman named Joey, played by Juan Pablo Raba. Right. And his abilities manifest, and apparently he can, like, liquefy metal. And when he touches things, they kind of break down, sometimes explode. Blows up real good. (laughs) Real good. Real good. And these two black cars show up that quake blast with her little earthquake powers right it's like Sei- she pushes Sei- them back Sei- right seismic it's like seismic vibratory force right and joey ends up getting like this placed in this what they call a polytechnic adaptive module or pam for short okay <laughs> pam pam well p-a-m pam and uh, they didn't nice. call it, they didn't call it pam i'm calling it pam nice so, anyway, it just kind of scoops him up and then it goes bloop right up. I was trying to think of a Pam quote and I can't think of one. I know. S snacks, I guess. S snacks, yeah. Would be the, yeah, the main one and I can't say that. Yeah, here. exactly. It's so wasted, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so, anyway, he gets sucked up into the sky and taken to, we've got a new aircraft because they haven't, they need a new aircraft to trash. That was awesome looking, by the way. Zephyr One. Yeah, the very Z- nice looking. So yeah, it's pretty sleek, pretty styly. I did not like that box though, yeah. because I was the, like, the if Pam, I got the Pam, <laughs> yeah, if I got sucked up in that box, yep, I would. That box would not be white on the inside anymore. Claustrophobia, or just the fact that it goes zoop, right, yeah. right up. Both, all of okay. the above. So, so after the uh, Joey gets carted away. Uh, Rosalind Price, played by Constance Zimmer. She's awesome. She gets revealed, and but she's end up but she's watched by none other than Phil Coulson, the one armed man from the crowd. I don't care. <laughs> you don't care about the one armed man? No, I didn't kill uh, my wife. Yeah, well... I don't care! Yes. The fugitive, get it? Yes, See, I, one get, man. I get it. Well, that was, that was Tommy Lee Jones who said that. It doesn't matter. It's still the one-armed man. Okay. All right, well, neither one of them was the one-armed man. The one-armed man was... Stop it! I'm referring just, to something I, with a one-armed man in it. I know, the fugitive, but... <laughs> Just saying the Since when did our sides ever make sense? Just saying the one armed man was in the scene with the theme oh, with okay. Harrison and What Tom did the one armed man say? I know. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm referring to the movie Mo- in which he is. All right, moving on. 
Uh, anyway, <laughs> Daisy tells Joey that, hey, we're protecting you. And by the way, have you had any fish oil vitamins lately? Yeah, whoops. Don't. And apparently we find out that the, the crystals, which was the little cliffhanger at the end of season two, uh, those Terrigen crystals have spread to other sea life. Yep. So Golly knows what's happening to that. Well, we know by the end of the episode, yeah, kind of. Sort of. Anyway, so, um, and there's like these black ops that Rosalind Price has been running have taken apparently five Inhumans. So she's kind of collecting them for some mm-hmm. reason. Although we find out that apparently Rosalind is not part of Hydra. She's no. something else. Right. The ATCU. Yes. The Advanced, the advanced Threat, contain- threat containment, containment Unit. Yep. We That's both, right. We both did our homework. Right. Well, I have notes. I have two. Yeah. Although yours is yours are better. No, they're not better. Granted. Uh, we have Bobby waiting as Joey gets moved to a new room. And she's wearing a spiffy lab coat to remind right. all of us that, hey, Mockingbird is a scientist too, guys. That's right. Which I thought was Mockingbird's cool. wings are still a little cinched around the edges <laughs> from last season. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. But she's a little more blonde this season. She is quite a bit more blonde. So, uh, so kudos there to Adrian Palicki. That's right. But uh, so I was glad to see Mockingbird looking more blonde this year, as opposed to dirty blonde. Yeah. So. Uh, Daisy attempts to tell Jer- Joey about the Terrigen mist and alien DNA. I liked and- uh, the the interplay between Daisy and Mac, by the way. Right. When they came into the room and they were both kind of, well, you're the muscle and you're the greeting. No, no. I'm the muscle and he's the greeting <laughs> party or whatever. He's just a soft little teddy bear on the inside. and. Right. <laughs> And they were kind of bantering. I like the fact that she and Mac are paired up together. Yes. Um, they're well, an interesting she, duo. Well, because she's so tiny and he's so, like, big and massive <laughs> with arms right. arms the size of trucks. Right. Exactly. And um, they just seem to be a nice pair. And um, I liked when she was talking to Joey as well because I felt horrible for him mm-hmm. uh, from the very beginning. Yeah. Because you could tell immediately he had no idea what was happening to him. Yep. And then they tell him he's going to have to leave his old life. It was awful. Yeah. He had no idea that that's what was going to happen to him. He thought that they would test him and then send him right back. Right. And uh, when he finally realized that he would never be able to go back to his old life, then, you know, he wasn't having it. And we get our Avengers Age of Ultron shout out because uh, uh, Daisy. Tells, mentions that everybody in the world is now twitchy after Sokovia. Right. So, <laughs> of course, they have to tie everything in, yeah, right? It's all connected. Synergy. Yeah. Yeah. Corporate synergy. That's right. The, the death knell of creativity. No, it's all right. But I don't yeah, mind. I don't mind stuff tying in. No, when, when you're do, doing a cinematic universe, yes, you're going to tie stuff in. Sure. So. As long as it's not so tied in that I lose yeah. some of the story if I it's, don't see all of it. It's a nice, I mean, it's it's a reference that here that if you don't get it, it's fine. It's no big deal. But right. If, but if you saw Avengers, Age of Ultron, then you're like, oh, it's tied It's a in. cute Easter egg. It's a, it's a cute Easter egg, exactly. Right. Uh, I mean, it's not like the grumpy cat mug that, you know, <laughs> if you miss it, you've lost everything. Yeah. Hunter, meanwhile, I know. You are not humoring me on the grumpy cat. I'm going to hammer this grumpy cat (laughs) mug all the way through. I'm going to be grumpy cat. Yes. You did not notice the grumpy cat mug? No. You didn't notice it? I didn't. God, it was so great. I was probably tweeting at the time or something. He's drinking out of a mug, and it's just got this disembodied grumpy cat head on it. Okay. And he looks like this. He's drinking like this, and the grumpy cat. Oh, is... so he's m- mimicking. He the... looks like the grumpy, the grumpy cat. cat. Okay, it's so good. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to give that a second viewing. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't notice it. It was hilarious. Okay, go ahead. Hunter review refuses to be in the same room with Bobby for unknown reasons that we oh, find out on. later. Well, we find out later. 
Of course we know why. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically we find out that, oh, guess what? He doesn't want to see the bride before the wedding. Mm-hmm. And Bobby's like, well, kind of what wedding? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, awkward, but. God, he's so attractive. You're really hoping for that Mockingbird spinoff. Because mm. We're getting a pilot. No I know. Question, but Adrian Pilecki's had a pilot before. I know. With Wonder Woman. So we'll see how that goes. I know. But it would yeah. be cool to get a Mockingbird. But then I feel bad for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because I like her on Agents They'd lose of her. S.H.I.E.L.D. I know. That's like, Although, if they just keep Hunter on the show, I'm okay with it. Unless they bring in somebody else that's cool. Yeah, that's true. So we'll see. But um, Coulson... They just got to keep some man candy on the show, that's all. That's all you care about. Sure. Fitz works. <laughs> Mac works. Hunter works. Yeah. They all work. All of we'll, we'll get into Fitz a little later. I know. This is kind of a big Fitz. Jose works, too. He's he's good. Joey. Yeah. Jose. I don't, I'll I was turn like, him. I was like, Jose. Oh, his name his name is Jose, but he goes by Joey. Oh, okay. I didn't... They that's said his, that. Okay. I th- all right. In his dossier. Oh, his dossier. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Coulson checks on the monolith progress, mm-hmm. where we, you know, last season, of course, Simmons got all sucked up into the Not monolith. Not so good. Um, Mac apparently locked up the room, and no one has stepped into it since Simmons vanished. Yeah. Except Fitz has been doing weird experiments. Yeah, Fitz, Fitz from afar. Fitz is not taking the her disappearance well at all, especially no. after the fact that, well, okay, we've kind of proclaimed our love here. Yeah. So, and Bobby oh, has been covering for him. Yeah. So Fitz goes to Tangier in Morocco mm-hmm. to to arrange meeting arrange a meeting with Youssef Haddad. Yep. And. I was, I was, guys. I was so, I, I was gonna, I was really hoping we get some kind of little Doctor Who shout out where Tit Fitz gets a fez. Yeah, that would be great. Because you're in Morocco, dude. Get a fez. Right. How exactly. great would that? Like if he was just walking around with a fez on, how great would that have been? Sure. But no, we didn't get that. No. You suck, Jed Whedon. Not even a little monkey running by with a fez on. Which would have yes. also been awesome. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Because then you would have had an Indiana Jones and a Doctor Who shout out all in the same little thing, right? And a Generator Rex, but I'm just saying. But if you saw Generator Rex, the cartoon. But right. Anyway. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Fitz apparently is looking for a skull casing over a thousand years old that contains a parchment to explain the monolith. And he tracked it to these... And I put yeah. shifty terroristy guys. Shifty terroristy guys. Yep. So yeah, great. Fitz is hooking up with ISIS. Well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or ISIL, depending on ISIL, yeah. which station you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Fitz admits to uh, Haddad that yep, he loves Simmons. Mm-hmm. So. And I put he doesn't do the whole trope thing. <laughs> so he disguises. The flash grenades to look like bombs. Yeah, he makes the trade. Yeah, Yusuf ends up getting these splinter bombs, but Fitz outsmarts them and escapes. Yep, because it would be a trope if he may yeah. if he actually traded them bombs, right? And then went, oh no, I forgot they could just kill me afterwards. <laughs> no, he was smart. Yeah, Fitz am smart. Yep. Okay, Bobby discovers that Rosalind takes the metro home. I want to say something here. Yeah. Now, I live in the D.C. area, Mm -hmm. and this was supposed to be the D.C. Metro. And? And I actually want to say they did a pretty good job of making it look like the D.C. Metro. Um, The station itself Mm -hmm. was, I think, was actually a shot of the D.C. Metro because it looked exactly like the station. Is it? Did they maybe film a little bit on location? Um, maybe the in, the station itself yeah, yeah. have actually been. Or do you think um, it's stock footage or something? Maybe. Um, the car, though, I don't think it was a car. All the ads looked right. Right. But our seats are yeah. stacked. Mm-hmm. They're not along the wall like New York subways. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, the colors were right and everything. I mean, we're, we have those nasty orange curtain uh <laughs> cushions yeah they're terrible the colors were all correct right so <laughs> the they looked very similar and they made it right for shooting a scene yeah 
it wouldn't have shot very well otherwise. So yeah. I want to say kudos to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for making it look as good as they could look and shoot it correctly. So, yay. Yay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. If no. I had a bit to pick, I'd pick it, but... No, that's good. I mean, that it means it's authentic. That's cool. Yeah. I get it. I was happy with it. I, if I was, if they had shot you know, like here in Columbus, I would have do the exact same thing, mm -hmm. or set it in Columbus, I should say. Um, okay, so uh, Coulson and Hunter show up, uh, confront her. But, Ros Rosalind's aware of Tahiti. Right. Well, they're tracking her. Yeah. To the metro, mm -hmm. thinking that they're going to catch her, but whoops, they she's actually caught them and yeah, in a trap. yeah, it's it's a trap. Yeah. There's a trap. That's a trap. Right. So anyway, uh, Rosalind wants to know where Coulson's hiding the Inhumans because right. she, she's apparently in charge of neutralizing threats. Right. And she mentions finding these bodies with chests burst open from energy blasts. Right. And she just happened to think, well, Coulson's behind it. Right. And yeah, they're kind of... Well, what I put down is they have a chat about whose organization is bigger, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. That they're kind of, you know. Comparing sizes. Right. Yeah. And um, and then they're both kind of um, saying, you know, um, well, she's saying that they're testing these dead inhumans, mm -hmm. but I'm not killing them. And she's implying that, you know, they are. Right. But Coulson knows that they're not. And now he knows that, that Constance's yeah. group, um, what's her name again? Rosalind. 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 Um, that her group isn't killing them either. Yeah. So there. So, yeah. The, so the question is, who's killing? Right. So either Hydra's still around, yeah. or something something else, else has happened. Yeah. Right. So anyway, and uh, then I said Phil gets free by detaching his arm, and then <laughs> and I put pretty handy. Oh. Uh -huh. oh right. But a bunch. Right. And then I said, and hurt tech insert yeah. tech. Here, blam, <laughs> they escape, and then they are back at base. Yep. So yeah, <laughs> Daisy goes. Daisy goes to see Lincoln in the hospital. That's funny. That is pretty funny. handy. <laughs> you like that? You cracked yourself up with that? No, one. I'm just laughing. Okay. Because it's irritating. <laughs> Why? I'm just trying to irritate you. That's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Continue. I'm just trying to get to sleep. I know. All right. So uh, Daisy goes to see Lincoln in the hospital and an argument escalates. Right. Because they want Lincoln to talk to Joey. Yeah. Thinking that he will relate to him better. Right. Uh, there's these electrical surges, but hey, guess what? It's not from Lincoln. Nope. And we get introduced to new supervillain Lash from the Inhuman comic. Inhuman number one. Tent Tentacles. Yeah, it's a recent, very recent supervillain. Yeah. Because so, he's only been around for like a couple years. So it's very recent. And he's already got himself on TV. So that's that's pretty cool. So I was reading a couple of recaps. Yeah. yeah. And uh, someone said, who the hell is this guy? And I was yeah. like, what? Whatever. Just look at. Why up. are you writing recaps? I know. People that, yeah, they write recaps. Apparently, they, they don't like think to look at wikipedia whether they're right. writing these articles or something right. it's on like the yeah. second page of wikipedia yeah dumbass yeah okay go ahead anyway so yeah there's lash shows up there's a fight lash gets sent through the floor lash escapes they scatter and, like little yeah. ants and lash looked great by the way uh matt willig okay matt willig is playing lash and he looked pretty dead on compared to the comics so i thought it was okay very with all the spiky stuff and everything all right. So, just saying. I think the tentacle part looked okay. You're just into tentacle porn, aren't you? No, the I I wasn't sure about the face part. Yeah. I'll, when I say yeah. my rating, you'll understand what I mean. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, so Lincoln decides, okay, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm done. Right. Yep. I'm done. And the, uh, it looks like, uh, ATCU is going to go after Lincoln next. Yes. Because the guys in black show up. Yep. We are the men in black. Okay. <laughs> men in black. The shiny thing. Yeah. Just look at the light. Look at the flashy That's thing. True. Look at the flashy thing. Uh, turns out Hunter has stayed away from Bobby because, hey, you're not supposed to see the bride on your wedding day. 
deathbed. Bobby's doubtful about getting remarried. Hunter tells her, well, guess what? I'm going after Ward in mm-hmm. Hydra because we don't that's know. That's how I roll. Yeah, that's how I roll. I mean, we don't really get a good explanation. Why is he going no, after Ward? No, we don't get a good explanation. Um, it's almost like he's saying, I like, want to do this so that I can be worthy of you or something. Yeah, it's like, dude. I guess because she got hurt by well, them. That's probably it. That's probably yeah. it. Because, uh, you know, like Ward and torture set her up for that trap. And then, then she got injured. So maybe he right. figures, well, I'm going to get Ward as payback yeah. for you. But that's dumb because she would never want him to do that. Pretty much. Or like, oh, hey, hey, maybe she's capable of getting her own payback. Right. But, you know, it's the alpha male thing. In Must, him, I guess. But still. Yeah. I'm just, I'm thinking that was his Yeah, raise on the extra. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that's where his Bobby Morris impression is. Mm-hmm. And I laughed out loud when he did it. <laughs> it was really good, though. It was a good American accent, but it was a very funny little line. Right. Um, and then... Mac interrupts Bobby and Hunter yeah. for President Ellis's address. And President Ellis, of course, is... Played once again by William Sadler, mm-hmm. who after he played President Ellis in Iron Man Three, it's all mm-hmm. connected. So, Good actor. and also he played Simon Stagg on The Flash and got immediately killed. That's right. So, just saying. Yeah, he's uh, in a lot of stuff. He's so. in a lot. Of, he's in everything. Yeah. Um, Ellis talks about the public's concern about alien threats, announces the task force the ATCU um, to neutralize th- threats with shield gone. Shield is out of commission. Yeah. 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 And then Coulson does some calculations on the crystals and says that in 17 months, 21 days, those crystals will be everywhere. Yep. All so, over the planet. So just in time for the show's fifth season. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. um, they were saying that we're thinking that... Or is that in time for the Inhumans movie? Or in time for February sweeps? No, yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, we were just saying that uh, yeah. the, the critics are saying it might get sped up so that uh, yeah. the the uh, head, yeah. it comes to a head at February sweeps. Well, I was so just saying... they need to... Yeah. I was, just, I was just thinking the Inhumans movie comes out about that time. Does it? Yeah. Okay. So that's when they need to actually yeah. put a stop to it. Yeah. Um, and then there's the talk between Fitz and Coulson. Yep. Uh, where he opens up the scroll case and finds yeah, the screw. He, there's like a, he's hoping that yeah. an artifact will be reveal mans- answers to the monolith. Only thing on the written on the parchment is death in Hebrew. Yeah. So, hmm, mm. death, like yeah. maybe like Thanos' death, maybe you know, that uh, you know, because he's all hung up on death, yeah, the the Marvel representation thereof. And, and uh, after I, I want to do this in, in one order here, real quick, okay. so that we don't go over it twice. Yeah. Good, Fitz goes insane trying to get the monolith to react to anything. Mm-hmm. And then we get a cut away to Simmons stranded on a desolate planet. Yep. Now, in between those two scenes, there's a little scene where Coulson and he are talking, and he says that he's going to go tell Simmons' family that she's MIA. Right. And he also has a connection here where he says that they've both lost their right hand. Yeah. Although, I think in Fitz's case, he's speaking metaphorically. No, he lost his left hand. Now, what he's saying is he lost his right hand man, yeah, quote unquote, right. um, because she's off on vacation. Yeah. And then Simmons. Oh, you're comparing May, right hand May, man. And May and Simmons. Right. Yeah. But then he's also, <laughs> he's also lost his left hand. <laughs> right. So Coulson has no hands. hands. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what? Does he have any hands left? Poor, poor Coulson. He's got two feet. And he says that he's been through three different artificial hands. Mm-hmm. This poor guy cannot catch a break. So no wonder he has a grumpy cat mug yeah. later. <laughs> Apparently he needs an adamantium hand. Yeah, that's true. Or something. Vibranium. <laughs> Vib- vibranium. Yeah. All right. So, uh, which is and- what? Captain Shield? 
Yes, Captain okay. America's shield, yes. I'm doing pretty good for someone who didn't read Marvel growing up. That's all right. You're picking it up. Okay. Uh, we find out that Simmons' surprise is alive. Of course she is. Now, the question is, where is she stranded? Yeah. So I'm kind this of... This actually w- looks like that planet well, that was at the end of... wasn't Guardians, right? Oh, well, no. Um, I'm kind of wondering, it's planet. like there's two planets I'm, I'm thinking, or two places I think it could be. I'm thinking it could be either one, the blue area of the moon, which is this kind of artificial environment where the Watcher lives on the moon. Okay. Or it could be the Kree's home planet of Hala. And we know that the monolith is associated with Kree. Kree, so I'm thinking more of Hala. Mm-hmm. But which is you know way out there, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. And that's where we're left. So, what did you give this one? I got to scroll up to check what did I give it. And here is where my uh, critique of the makeup mm-hmm. in this episode comes in. I gave it eight and a half recycled Cardassian headpieces. <laughs> I liked the tentacly part, yeah, yeah, but the face looked very much like the Cardassian yes. face to me. So I just wish it looked a little different. A little more, a little more original. I thought he looked a little bit more like the character. Yeah. Yeah. There here. Hold on. Let me, let me get the, the, the character. So I, you can decide for yourself. Hold on. All right. Let me play some music. Charles Gidding. Comics out of his bookcase. And he's showing me. Oh. I see. Okay. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. I was narrating you going to your bookcase. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'm trying to get the glare off. But see, I thought it was pretty faithful to the yeah, depiction. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Okay. So. I, I stand by my recycled Cardassian head okay. pieces. So. Okay. Because it did put me in the mind of Cardassian faces. <laughs> now I want to watch Deep Space Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so... Uh, there never goes by a day when I don't want to watch some Star Trek yeah. incarnation. So I gave this one 8 out of 10 bottles of fish oil vitamins. Yeah. Those are gross looking. Yeah. But, anyway. And I cannot wait to see more of Joey. Right. I like him very much. So we'll see. So I think it was a pretty promising start to the season. I did too. So, all right. Um, so I guess that about wraps it up. We've run really long. That's, yeah. That's so on, that's on I me. have some feedback think, and spoilers, but. Yeah. yeah. What should we do? <laughs> you can do the feedback. Okay. We'll do the feedback. and then One feedback. We'll hold off on the spoilers till next. We're going okay. to talk again on Saturday. So we'll do the spoilers then. Okay. Feedback. It's from Justina. Hi, Karen and Charles. I am proud to be a zoner. And yeah. she put hashtag zoner. Hashtag zoner. And I would love a t-shirt to prove it. I give this Gotham seven beautiful, painful distractions because Barbara is beautiful and caused pain for Jim this episode. I love the relationship between Bruce and Alfred. In the pilot last year, when Bruce runs to Alfred after his parents are shot, Alfred looks lost. Now he is violently destroying a computer that he perceives as a threat to Bruce, just as a father would, and their fight felt very parent versus child as well. My favorite scene was with Jerome. The way they shot that scene and kept zooming into his mouth and his smile, that iconic Joker smile. (laughs) Will Jim be commissioner now? I know that is his comic destiny, but I wasn't expecting it to be now. I can also picture the actor they picked for Lucius Fox getting older to becoming Morgan Freeman. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was very exciting. I think I will give it an 8 because Simmons is stuck on another planet. (laughs) She is my favorite, and this storyline is really different and exciting. Have a super week, Justina. All right. Thanks, Justina. Yep. Thank you, Justina. All right. So. And because uh, I am sick and you are tired. Yes. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna pull the plug on tonight's episode. Yeah, we'll just uh, and wrap this up. Um, be sure to check out at Phantom Zonecast on Twitter. Yep. And Phantom Zonecast on Facebook. We're right. now up to fifty-eight likes, so thanks for that, everybody. 
Yay! So, cheers for that. Hopefully, hopefully we get more. And uh, f- please follow us on lo- iTunes. Subscribe to us. Please do. Because that would be great. And please leave us a review and tell mm-hmm. us uh, what you think about the show. Hopefully, you like the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, please leave us a review. And Karen, where can they find you? At Oliveria on the Twitter machine. And there's an About Me link in my bio. And also, I'm going to do a, a thing here because I spoke to my uh, radio DJ hero last week, uh, Don Geronimo, and he let me get a plug in for both of my networks. And Which is awesome. Castle, yes. So I'm going to give him a little plug, even though he doesn't really need it. But it's uh, Don Geronimo Show. Dot com uh, also podgod.com <laughs> so um he has thousands and thousands of listener listeners and i warn you it's a subscriber based show but there is a free uh sample that you can listen to on his website uh and he i like him very much he is definitely a shock jock but i've been listening to him forever and uh i i am on his show quite a bit <laughs> Um, he you're, has a regu- read- you're, you're a regular. Yeah, he has me read porn sometimes <laughs> on his show. I have my own little corner on his website. Well, you have a great voice for so, it. Not tonight, but yes, no, usually. G- generally. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so he interviewed me last week, and I got to plug these w- p- podcasts, so I thought I'd at least put it out there to say hi to him. So that's me. Okay. And how about you, Charles? Uh, real quick, um, at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine, at Charles Skaggs on the Instagram, uh, Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus, and Facebook, and my blog of geeky things, Damn Good Coffee and Hot. <laughs> so where I talk about things like the Fandom Zone podcast, comics on TV, and all kinds of stuff. Yay. So And uh, Karen's got the beard back. That's right. So you're my beard, apparently. How we doing? Uh, we're doing good. We're running late, so yeah. uh, we're Are gonna we wrap done? this up. I think we're done. So uh, for all, right. all of us here at the Phantom Zone podcast, we will talk to you probably within three days from now. Yep. <laughs> so later days, guys. Bye, everyone.